Hello. So in this lesson, we are looking at Sir Francis Walsingham. We want to understand why was he so important to Elizabeth I? And our learning objectives are going to be to understand what actions did Walsingham take to protect Elizabeth? And also, why was he so effective in his role of protecting her? What made him stand out? Now, there's no worksheet for today's lesson, but as always, I've told you I'd strongly recommend that you make some notes, possibly on some flashcards like this, just to help prepare yourself for the GCSE exam. Page 18 of the revision guide in Google Classrooms will help you as well. So, from 1573, Francis Walsingham became Secretary of State for Elizabeth I. That's a high position in her government. And one of the many responsibilities he had was her safety. Now, if you think about this 1573, we've already seen two attempts on Elizabeth's life with the revolt of the Northern Earls and the Ridolfi plot as well. So Walsingham knew that actually Elizabeth had a lot of enemies. This was going to be a tough job for him. There were Catholics in England who secretly did not like Elizabeth. He would have to find out who they were, a tough job. There were also Catholics across Europe, places like France and Spain, that wanted Elizabeth gone and were prepared to take action to get rid of her. He had to keep an eye on those people as well and find out who they were. Walsingham realised the more information he had on these people, the better he could do his job. Luckily for Elizabeth, Walsingham is the very definition of a hard worker. He is a fanatic in his role regarding national security. He does everything he can to protect Elizabeth. He takes his job incredibly seriously. And he's one of the main reasons why she is successful because of how well he protects her. So what does he do? Well, the first thing he does is spies. Now, England had used spies before. He's not come up with the idea of spies. But Walsingham developed this further and he became a spy master. That means that he employed lots of spies across the country, a network of them. In every county in England, there was a spy, at least one. In the important towns, there would be a spy as well. Now, these weren't James Bond style figures, people walking around in suits. They were ordinary people. And they would keep an eye on people that could seem suspicious and they would put, report back to Walsingham with information. He would pay them for it, usually out of his own money. By 1580, Walsingham had spies abroad as well. He had 12 in France. He had three in Italy, four in Spain and others across Europe. One example of how effective these spies were that when the Spanish Armada was planned, and Spain had the details on how they were going to attack England, Walsingham found out a few days later. Elizabeth was warned in time. But it wasn't just spies that he had everywhere. It was also things like code breakers. So the Catholics, as we saw in the Babington plot, would write in codes, secret coded messages to protect themselves. Well, that didn't work with Walsingham around because he employed people to crack codes Geniuses like Thomas Phillips, it didn't matter what the code was, he could work out how to break it. He set up a school for code breakers to make sure that Elizabeth would be protected in the future, to make sure that others understood the skills and the techs needed to unlock codes. And he also had people trained to unseal letters, read the contents, copy the details down from the letter, and then seal it back up to avoid any suspicion. Now, normally, when you read a letter like you can see in a picture, you have to break that wax seal off. You have to damage it to open it. And therefore, if someone's been reading your letter, you would know when you received it, you would say, hang on a minute, this wax seal has been damaged. But by being able to remove it, we saw this in the Babington plot. They can take the seal off the letters that Mary has written. They can copy the letters, crack the codes and then reseal it in such a way that no one ever knew the letter hadn't been touched. There was no suspicion at all. When Babington wrote letters to Mary, they had already received them and copied them down. But Mary didn't know this because the seal was still stuck on there. How did he treat his enemies? Orson didn't want to use torture against captured Catholic priests. He said, look, where we can, we're going to try to avoid torture. 
And one of the main reasons for that was because he didn't want people to feel sympathetic to the Catholics. Torture at this time was particularly grim. You can see an example here in the picture, the rack in the Tower of London, where they would take people and they would just tie them up and stretch them out until their bones dislocated and people cracked and gave information. But Walsing would still use torture. He still knew he needed to use it. It was a sad fact for him at the time. Now, when he captured Catholic priests, for example, it shouldn't have been in England. They'd been smuggled in abroad. They weren't all executed. 130 in total were, but a special prison was made, which was uh, not as harsh as a normal prison for criminals, to hold many priests in. He did try not to kill as many priests as possible. Some case study she actually used the priest. So John Hart, a captured Catholic priest, he was being brought onto the rack. He was about to be tied up and he said, look, don't torture me. Please don't torture me. Give me a pardon. Forgive me for being here and I'll spy for you. I will spy on the other Catholics. And so Walsingham was able to use John Hart in this way. That's not a picture of John Hart. I looked on Google for two minutes, couldn't find it, couldn't be bothered, but you get the idea. Walsingham had an eye on foreigners in England as well. He suspected that foreign Catholics might be coming abroad to try to assassinate Elizabeth, people from France and Spain, for example. There were laws that if a foreign person was staying in your pub or your inn, you had to report it so that person could be checked out, a spy could be sent to monitor them. What else did he do? Well, when the Spanish did decide to launch their ships, or we called it the Armada, he organised that along the coast of England, there would be a series of torches, huge beacons, like you can see in the picture here, that would be lit. And that way, as soon as the south of England saw the first Spanish boats, they could light their beacon and then the next beacon could be lit and the next beacon and so on. So all of England was prepared for attack, kind of like a rubbish fire Mexican wave, if you will. Walsingham, as I said before, paid his spies. He didn't pay them a lot of money. But he had to pay them out of his own pocket, usually. Walsingham funded a lot of these spies himself. He wasn't paid that much by the Queen. And when he died, he was close to being bankrupt. He died in 1590, two years after the Spanish invasion was um, not a success at all. It was completely fooled by the English. It failed. And it seemed Elizabeth was safe at this point. Mary, Queen of Scots, was dead. Of course, Walsingham had a hand in that. We'd looked at that before. And the Spanish had failed to attack, the Spanish had been defeated. And so it looks like he dies knowing that he's done his job. So our learning objective for this one was to understand what actions did Walsingham take to protect Elizabeth? What if that came up in an exam question? Think about things like the spy network, decoding the letters. Why was he so effective in his role of protecting her? Think about the detail he put in, the fact he put spies in other countries, the fact he made sure the spies were paid, the range of spies he had, the fact he would copy letters, the fact he would reseal the letters. And then think about this question. Was Walshingham the main reason the Catholic plots failed to replace Elizabeth? Because we've seen a number of them fail and Walshingham has had a hand in several of them being fooled and stopped. But what else could it be then if it's not Walsingham's work? We could say a lack of commitment from Spain. We've seen several plots where Spain said they would send troops and didn't. What if Spain had done that? Revolt of the Northern Isles, for example. What about the majority of Catholics in England then loyal to Elizabeth due to her religious settlements? If all the Catholics had rebelled, would Walsingham be able to stop that? Would anyone have been able to stop that? The execution of Mary, Queen of Scots, ending Catholic plots to have Elizabeth replaced as queen. When Mary, Queen of Scots is killed, there is no one the Catholics can put onto the throne. OK, so I think that might be a reason as well. Of course, Walsingham had a hand in that, as we've seen in previous lessons. So just something to think about there. How important was Walsingham? Hopefully you've got your notes. If this came up as an exam question, hopefully you'll be able to give some good details there as well. He's a hugely important person, Elizabethan England. And I think he's someone who just goes to show, if you work hard at your job, if you're dedicated enough to your job, you can make sure it's a success, no matter how tricky the job might seem. And with that moral note to end this lesson on, look after yourself, guys. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.